In today's episode, we're going to have three different global illumination options compared inside of Unreal Engine, including NVIDIA's brand new RTX GI. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. So with the recent release of NVIDIA's RTX GI plugin for Unreal Engine 4 and my release of the video on how you can get access to download, compile, and finally use it, if you want to know how to do that, go ahead and check out that particular video. I thought it'd be nice to compare this new technology to some of Unreal Engine 4's other technologies, along with actual hardware-based ray tracing that you get with RTX or DXR, DirectX ray tracing type cards. So this is a very simple scene, but can give us some ideas on what the benefits and upsides are of each technology. And if I pull out here, you can see this is just a number of planes or cubes that are stretched together to where there's only a small hole for a spotlight to shine through right here. But what we're gonna see right now on the inside is the indirect lighting or the lack thereof. So I don't have any type of ray tracing or global illumination enabled right now. Let's go ahead and turn on NVIDIA's own technology and see how that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on just so you can see the difference and I'll talk about how you do it. So I'm gonna go and type uh, RTX and you can see we get the different, uh, you'll see a little bit on your screen, but we get different console commands for this. And the one we want to use is RTX GI, DDGI, and I'm going to do space and type one and press enter. That's going to enable. And right away, you can see we're getting all the nice bounce lighting that we didn't have before. So I'll go ahead and toggle this off and then on again. And you can see we're getting a lot going on right here. So if we go in the corner here, we're getting nice bounce lighting, filling the shadows. It would be very, very dark otherwise. And we're also getting the color that's bleeding in from the different areas. And if we go back to the corner here, this is a nice example as well. Let's go ahead and turn off. We aren't getting any bounce lighting whatsoever, but also with this spotlight we have placed right here, when it's on, we are getting the combination of the red and the blue, which is kind of a purple, bouncing onto the wall over here. And of course, if I go ahead and grab that light, now if I rotate this, you'll see I only get the blue or the red based on what the light is actually hitting. Now, if you notice, there is a lag in the update of the lights, and we're gonna talk about that in just a little bit, but we can see doing some really, really cool stuff for us. Now, my favorite part of this technology right now, though, is not even what it can do for the light, which is amazing, but let's go ahead and turn off this spotlight we have up here. I'm gonna go ahead and select this and just say, uh, turn off effects world. And now we get to what I think is really, really cool. So. With the RTX GI, we can have emissive surfaces that actually cast light. So you can see, let me go ahead and make all these walls white right here. So we're actually seeing the light from the emissive surfaces. So we can see we're getting nice cast blue light here. We're getting nice warmer red light being cast here. And we're getting the nice combination as we hit the corners here. And we're seeing we're getting nice gradation on the shapes as well. Now you probably are noticing we are getting some like little dots on the wall here and we'll talk about what those are and how we can remedy that in just a little bit. But before we get into the details of how this works, let's go ahead and talk about what the upsides and the downsides are. And what we're going to compare this to really quick is SSGI, which is built into Unreal Engine 4. I have my uh, project settings loaded right here and you can see I have this disabled right now. As soon as I check this box, SSGI is going to pop on and you can see I actually like the look of this a little bit more. I feel like this is a little bit more accurate. One thing worth noting though, is that the actual emissive surfaces, which I'll load up really quick, seems you have to pump them up a little bit higher when you're using SSGI versus, versus RTX GI. So right now you can see that both of these are set to a value of 0.9. I'll try and resize this so we can see this on screen a little bit better. If I pump this up to a value of, let's say instead of 0.99, and we'll go ahead and grab the other one as well and put this up to nine. That's looking a little bit more accurate, but it's really noisy. The One of the few options we have with SSGI, though, I'm gonna press the tilde key and type SSGI. I'm gonna go in and down, go down to quality. I'm gonna put four, which is high quality. And you can see this actually is a really nice, clean result. And I think I do prefer this a little bit over the other solution of RTX GI. If I look in the corner here, we're also getting very, very nice bounce light on this block right here and on the wall behind it. And it updates a little bit more quickly than I think with uh, 
the RTX GI. Now, the downside of SSGI, which is what we have enabled right now, is that if the camera can't see it, it's not actually being cast in the scene. So this blue emissive material right here, if I move the camera past that, you can see it immediately stops affecting the area. Now, if I start to look at it a little bit like peek, it's like, no, I'm on, no, I'm off, no, I'm on, no, I'm off. The same thing with the red. As soon as that red emissive material is out of view of the camera, it's gone. And the same thing holds true for this. If I move past this light, you can see I'm no longer getting that bounce light. So if you're using static cameras or you're moving around your scene very intelligently or very planned, I think the SSGI looks a little bit better. But I'm going to go ahead and turn off our SSGI and take a look at the RTX GI. And by the way, this is what seems to happen with the missive materials. If you turn up the value of the light beyond 0.9 or, or 1, is it starts to go into different color territories. So if I go ahead and turn this back down to 0.9, all right, that's looking accurate again. If I go to the other emissive material and put this at 0.9 as well, okay, now that's looking a little bit more on what I'm expecting. So the big benefit here, like I was mentioning, is that this is not so dependent or not dependent at all on the camera position. So if I go ahead and move past this blue emissive material, you can see the bounce light is still affecting the scene. If I move past this red emissive surface, it's still affecting the scene. So it definitely is more flexible in how you want to place your camera. And let me go ahead and turn on our frames per second. You can see we're running, per, so I am running on a RTX 2080, so it is a nice graphics card. All right, so let's go ahead and look around and let's talk about these dots we're getting on screen. So one of the ways that this technology is working, the RTX GI, is if I go ahead and press the tilde key, let me go ahead and move this plug-in window down a little bit more. I start to type RTX GI. Let's go ahead and do show probes. I think I've set that to one. And you can see these are actually the probes that are sampling the scene for light and where the directions are going and everything like that. So you can see it's picking up some blue bounce light here and everything like that. And that's actually how our scene is being lit is through these probes. And you can adjust the density of these through your DDGI volume, which is right here. And up top you have your, your main options, which how many rays are being shot out from each probe. Right now it's on 288, which is the default. You can go all the way up high, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. And you can also up or down your probe count. Now, you can probably guess right now the reason we're getting those dots on the wall is because, let me go ahead and turn off our visibility for our probes, is because we have spots or probes that are right next to the wall, and so we're seeing those dots or those probes reflecting right on there. So if we turn up, and NVIDIA doesn't always recommend this, you want to keep it as sparse as possible. But if we do turn this up to, let's say, 16 by 16 by 16, a lot of these are being turned off by default to save performance because they're not touching anything or not near any geometry. So we're not really losing a whole lot of performance. So right now I'm at a, about 120 frames per second. Let's go back to default. Still at about 120 frames per second. So the technology is intelligent enough to know, hey, you know what, you're packing in more than you actually need. But since a lot of these aren't near geometry, we're not going to use those and we're going to automatically disable them. So what I was finding is if I do that, and I'll go ahead and turn off the visibility of our probes here, now those dots are actually gone and we're looking pretty decent. Now let's go ahead and revisit over here this spotlight and how I was talking about there's a lag between moving the light and actually having the indirect lighting update. And that's due to a couple things. The main one, if we go to our DDGI volume, and by the way, I didn't talk about that, but the DDGI volume just needs to encompass whatever you want to have indirect lighting on. So you can see it's just encompassing this room here. And you just drag that in, you go to all classes, and you just type in DDGI, and you should be able to drag in. And again, this is assuming you've compiled the source code and then installed the plugin correctly. But with this set, and with this rotating, it is going, ah, it's lagging more than I would think it, it should. Now, if we go down to our options in the DDGI volume, there is a setting called, let's see, hysteresis, like I'm thinking hysterical, like how fast it's moving. Or, anyway, but if we turn this all the way down to zero, it's going to get very noisy, and now it looks like we have a strobe going off or like a disco ball or something. But if you notice, if I go ahead and rotate this, it's ro it's updating basically real time now. So it's kind of, when you do this, it's averaging the frames together of the previous frame and things like that. I think that's what the documentation is saying. It's kind of averaging things together. Now we can mitigate this crazy splotchiness by upping the amount of rays that the each 
actual probe is shooting out, if I pump this all the way up, we can see we did lose some frames per second. We went from, I think, from like about 119, 120 down to, it looks like it's hovering around 94 to 96. But we do have much, much less noise. It's still there, but now we might be able to go down to this value and maybe put in a value of, I don't know, 0 0.6, 0 0.65. And this is obviously not being denoised, but it is giving us eh, what might be a passable result. And if we go in the corner here and we start to rotate this guy, I would say we're getting much closer to at least passable feeling like it's real-time updates in the bounce light. Now again, with, with the SSGI, let me go ahead and enable that plugin really quick. You don't have this problem as much, but again, if you ever the camera can't see the light, then you don't get that bounce light anymore, which is obviously a big issue. All right, so last but not least, let's go ahead and look at the, not real ray tracing, but let's go and look at hardware based or DirectX ray tracing. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my post-process volume. And let's go ahead and go down to type. And the big downside to actually using the supposed real ray tracing is if I go ahead and change this to, uh, we'll just do Final Gather, which is a lower quality version. You can see we're not getting any bounce light from these guys. And that's because actual ray trace global illumination inside of Unreal does not support emissive materials, which NVIDIA had a technology a long time ago called VXGI, which I really, really liked. It was a voxel based and it gave you kind of the similar feel of what you're getting with RTX GI, but just a different approach, maybe not as accurate but it also supports emissive materials. So with real ray trace global illumination, we don't get emissive materials. If we go ahead and turn back on our spotlight up here, and we'll go ahead and just say, this is allowed to affect the world. Oh, really, really bright. Let's go ahead and make our walls red, green, and blue again. We run into the problem to where we do get noise with the global illumination. We can, of course, try and fix that a little bit. So let's go ahead and go down in our post-process volume to where we have our global illumination properties. And for max samples, we'll go and put this up to, I think 18 is what the uh, final gather, which is the lighter version of ray tracing wants. And it's looking cleaner if you let it settle for a little bit, but it still has some noise. And right now, actually our frame rate's not too bad. It's at 120. Now, obviously this is a small space, but not running too bad. If we go ahead and look at our scene, one thing that's really cool is we're actually catching bounce light all the way over from here from this green wall onto this white wall over here. So really, really cool. If we go ahead and turn up the effect intensity of our light here, we will also start to get bounce light from that as well. It just has to be turned up higher in order for it to show up in the scene. So if we go ahead and select our spotlight up here, go ahead and turn off its effect on the world. You can see we still are getting bounce light over here. It just can't be at the as low of a value as the other versions of the technology for global illumination. I don't know if this is more accurate since it's actually doing ray tracing. I'm assuming it is, but the downside is it's also kind of noisy. So if we wanted to get rid of this noise, actually go down to our global illumination settings, and we would have to set it to probably brute force, which is the much more costly version of that. And then we can see that we can get rid of more of the noise. And if we wanted to get more bounces of light, we can go ahead and turn up our bounces to say something like three. But now you can see just in this small scene we have here, we are running at only about, well, let's get the light on the screen. We're only running at about 23, 24 frames a second. And we're in just this little teeny tiny room. So some big downsides to using real ray traced global illumination if you're doing more than one bounce. But right now on brute force with 18 samples per pixel, it's a pretty good amount. It doesn't look too bad, it still has some noise. If I was running this out, I'd probably have to turn it up even more. But we are getting probably what is the most accurate. So quite a number of things we talked about here, but some really, really fun ones. I'm excited at the potential and the possibilities that RTX GI has, especially if I go back to the DDGI volume and go ahead and just put the settings back to default just so we can get a more accurate look at what we're working with, I mean, to me, this looks absolutely beautiful, especially if I go ahead and make these walls white. The bounce light looks absolutely beautiful. No matter where you move in the scene, it's going to update. And if you adjust your settings, you can get rid of the probe kind of leftovers. And also you can go ahead and uh, get the updates on the lights a lot quicker by adjusting the hysteresis value here. 
you can get some real, real nice results. And again, the performance is a big, big draw of this. My only hope is that NVIDIA will start to incorporate this directly into Unreal instead of having a download source code, having to compile it, and then going to have to build it. Again, if you want to mess around with this, go ahead and check out my video on how you can go through the process. It's going to take a while, especially compiling and Visual Basic and all those things. Once you do it once, it goes a lot quicker and you get used to the process. But hopefully this gives you a good, fun introduction to RTX GI and where it kind of stands along with other global illumination options inside of Unreal. Hopefully this was pretty fun. Hopefully you kind of get some ideas on the type of things you'd like to do with this. And I'll see you on the next Johnny How-To.